Dr. Elif was a CCISD teacher and administrator from 1983 to 1997. He became our permanent superintendent of schools in 2007 and has previously been named a superintendent of the year by our Region 2 Education Service Center. Scott is an exceptional leader for our school district, having worked to build relationships both within the district and in our community. He has adopted a very forward-thinking, positive approach to education for the good of our employers, employees, employers, and our students. Even while facing some of the greatest challenges experienced by our public school system in recent history, he has indeed worked tirelessly and with great integrity to move this district forward to accomplish our vision. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce and welcome to the stage our coach for today, Dr. D. Scott Ellis. You know, I was in band when I was in high school, and I never really got this. And then when I put that whistle on today, I realized that that's why the coach has all the power in the school. It's all about the whistle. I want to join Carol, Andy, Christina, and everybody from the Education Foundation and, and from the district in thanking each and every one of you so very much for being here. Your presence and your support today demonstrate to our teachers that you believe their work is important, to our students that you know that they are our future, and to the greater community that you believe education is the key to unlocking Corpus Christi's potential. Now before I begin with my, uh, my presentation, I want to recognize a few young people who make our story both interesting and inspirational. First of all, how did you like the pregame show outside? It's really good, right? It? So if you got here late, here's what you missed. Uh, our folks were greeted by our outstanding Drumline Texans cheerleaders from Ray High School. Uh, the Drumline's under the direction of head band director Nixon Williams. And of course, during lunch, the very talented King High School vocal suspension provided entertainment under the direction of choir director David Heiser. And now you're going to have a chance to enjoy a delicious dessert prepared by some of our culinary students from Moody High School who received their instruction from Carol Lemke. I'd also like to thank all of our students who made those presentations outside in the foyer and displayed their work in our Hearts and Minds Showcase, as well as our student ambassadors who've been helping the event staff today. To all of these students, thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be reminded of how exceptional you really are. Now I'd like to introduce some other folks who work directly with me every day. These are the members of our executive team, and I'm going to ask them to stand. Dr. Bernadine Cervantes, Javier Gonzalez, Dr. Roland Hernandez, Dr. Janice Jordan, um, Dr. John Jansen was not able to be with us today, Debbie Seeger, and Lorette Williams. Thank you very much for your leadership. And I just want to say, Lorette, stand up. Lorette's entire team, Kim, Crystal, Tanise, Lyndall, Julie, Tracy, Betty, they worked for months to put this event on and plan it to make it very special for you. So I just want to say you guys are the best. Thanks. Every year at the State of the District, we have two goals that we want to achieve. The first one is we want you to leave this luncheon today knowing something that you didn't know about the school district, and then we want you to tell somebody about it. We want you to learn something that you didn't know today about your district, and then go tell somebody the good news. And then second, we want you to have a really good time. So let me check on that. Are you having a good time? All right, good, good. Because if you're not, I'm going to blow my whistle again. So, you know, so often what we may know about CCISD or really public education in general is what you glean from news reports, from talk radio, from social media, maybe who's in line with you at the HEB. And often those tidbits of information are about what's wrong with schools, what's wrong with parents, what's wrong with kids, what's wrong with teachers, what's wrong with the school board, what's wrong with the superintendent, just what's wrong in general. 
But there are many, many more things that are going right in our schools, not just here in Corpus Christi, but in public education overall. So we want to make sure that in the paraphrased words of Paul Harvey, that you know the rest of our story. This past year has been a year of very dramatic change in our district and all Texas school districts. The Texas legislature made sweeping changes to graduation requirements and testing that are going to be good for Texas students. House Bill 5 is going to open up the opportunity for our district students to pursue different pathways to graduation based on their interests and future plans while ensuring that their courses of study are rigorous and challenging. No longer are we going to be required to offer a one-size-fits-all approach to secondary education. Instead, students will be able to pursue endorsements in business, the arts, science and technology, and perhaps most exciting for our industry partners who are here today, courses of study that will prepare them to successfully enter the world of work right here in our local area, supporting the growing demand for skilled workers in our energy-related industries. That is a good news item. Now, our local legislators, Senator Hinojosa, Chairman Hunter, and Chairman Herrero, they were very key leaders in this effort in Austin earlier this year, and they deserve our thanks and praise. Thank you very much for what you did for us. Another bit of good news is that more time is going to be spent on teaching rather than testing. As I reported last year, we were spending nearly 25% of the academic year engaged in some type of state mandated testing. But now, under House Bill 5, that required testing has been reduced greatly at high school while maintaining high levels of accountability. That reduction in end of course exams from 15 to 5 means that teachers can spend more time preparing students for graduation and the world beyond through engaging instruction. And engagement is what it really is all about. You know, the days when I was in school of the teacher just standing in front of the class, dispensing knowledge as the sage on the stage, that has to change. Why? Well, because that model worked when the expectation was that a few students would go to college, and many would go to work right out of high school, and then many would drop out, but still be able to find a job. Well, that's not the world we live in today. Many will go to college, and many will go to work after some post-secondary training, but few will be able to find success if they only have a high school diploma, or worse, if they drop out. Now, today's students come to school technology ready. They're, they're the natives in the land of technology. We're just, us old folks, we're just the immigrants in the land of technology. But they're already engaging the world through technology at an early age, and they know that information is readily available beyond what can, they can get from a lecture or a textbook. To truly meet the needs of every single student, teachers and everyone in the community must embrace the idea that harnessing the power of technology to individualize instruction, that's the most powerful thing we can do. And we have to provide the resources for them to do just that. So how do we keep our students actively engaged? How can we ensure that meaningful learning is taking place in every classroom every day? Well, it's happening right now in classrooms across your district, and the outcomes are pretty amazing. Here's the rest of our story as we offer a small glimpse into a school where engagement is the driving force for teaching and learning. Take a look at any one of these robots and you'll be impressed. Attention to detail, functionality, how about just plain cool? But what is even more impressive is the fact that they were totally built from scratch by Moody High School students. The students have to understand it has to be built on their design, not mine. And the, the students will ask me a question. And as soon as they ask me a question, I ask them a question. Questions that lead to answers and ultimately a finished product, like this underwater robot designed and built by this team of three. 
It also leads to reflection, analyzing improvements to be made the next time around. We noticed that one of the uh, problems with our robots were when they would hit the ground, it would, it would break apart even with the PVC cement. So we decided to elevate the bottom structure just a slightly. At Moody High School, there are students who design and build robots that go underwater. And another team of students who design robots for land, creating computer-generated designs using basic parts like these and ending up with a high-tech achievement. So what makes students cross over the line of learning and veer onto the road of retention? What makes them become critical thinkers, analyzers of problems? We don't have to look far to find the answer. Students themselves say it is about engagement. You're learning buoyancy, which you're not going to, you're going to learn in physics, but you're just going to see it on a paper. You're actually learning what's happening with the buoyancy. This is basically a prime example of what we're doing in physics with buoyancy. It, yeah. it helps us put it into a real life situation. Back in the lab, with the marine robotics competition long behind them, the three are still hammering it out. We learned a lot towards the end of the year that we should have done at the beginning, that should have been implemented at the very beginning, and then the camaraderie of your, the group that you have is just amazing. You become better friends with the group, and you learn to, you're basically a family. A family of learners eager for their next lesson. It's a challenge to be able to build something and see the results of it. It's amazing. You built it with your own hands. You know, when we talk about 21st century learning, we probably all need to recognize that that's not a future concern. That is a today concern. Friends, the 21st century is already 14 years old. And as I said earlier, not only technology and those demands have changed our, uh, our landscape, but Texas public schools have seen tremendous and rapid change of other types in the past few years, from the tax test to the star test, a complete overhaul of our accountability system, new and changing federal mandates that are coupled with sequestration, all of those impact our daily work. Now, under our new statewide accountability system, CCISD received a rating of MET standard, and 15 of our campuses received distinctions for outstanding academic performance and improvement. But at the same time, some of our campuses were rated as improvement needed. So we hit the ground running this year with some very specific and detailed plans for performance improvement at these schools. And our goal is for all of our individual campuses, as well as our district, to meet those state standards and exceed the performance mean among Texas districts. One factor that's going to help us is the partial reversal of the devastating cuts to public education funding that took place a few years ago and that led many districts to cut programs and staff. Now, while your Board of Trustees did not take the drastic step to lay off employees, we did reduce positions through attrition. The good news is that our legislator, legislature's action to restore about 60% of that, those funding cuts has enabled us to bring our classroom ratios back to 1 to 22 at the elementary level and allowed us to provide a compensation increase for our teachers and staff this year. Our, yes, there we go. That's good. CCISD continues to maximize our resources. Our bond rating is very strong, and our financial standing is evidenced by another superior designation for the Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas, which is the measure that's used to rate all Texas public school districts' financial standing. Now, there's still more to be done with regard to school funding to ensure that Corpus Christi students have access to the same level of resources as students in Austin and Dallas and Houston. We deserve that. And your Board of Trustees has joined CCISD with hundreds of other districts in our state in the fight for funding equity, and that effort still continues today. We've also been able to keep the cost of health coverage low for our employees through the sound management of our insurance program. With a focus on preventive care and wellness, we've implemented programs in the past year to encourage our employees to be knowledgeable about their health and to take responsibility for their well-being. Over the long term, we believe that this focus on wellness is going to help us increase productivity, 
decrease absenteeism due to illness, and help contain escalating health care costs, which is good for our employers and that's good for our taxpayers. That focus on health and wellness extends to our students as well. Your board took action to increase our certified physical education staff at the elementary school level and renewed our emphasis on nutrition through programs like Breakfast in the Classroom and the HEB Slim Down Showdown with students and staff. Nearly 50 of our campuses have gardens that have been planted in part to help students learn about healthy eating. And students themselves are taking on the challenge to improve health and wellness through student-led programs like the one you're about to see. It's inspiring to see students take a personal responsibility for health and wellness, not just their own, but that of others. Making sure this is fully understood, even for the very youngest of children, is the mission of this next group of students. In the end, I think you'll be happy that I introduce them to you, and you'll be even more pleased when you see the rest of our story about what they're doing to make a difference. These Ray High School students are doing more than attending your standard club meeting. They're actually helping to change perceptions about leading a healthy lifestyle right here in our own community. Let me introduce you to the Mission Fit Possible Club. Well, we actually started it about three years ago. Um, we, Corpus Christi was titled the fattest city in America. Um, so at that time we were in middle school and we decided that we wanted to change our community and help out our generation of children. Mission Fit Possible members visited four CCISD elementary schools this past year, working with hundreds of second graders. Their visits included a survey, a video to encourage and promote healthy living, and a ton of motivation along the way. I've heard about fitness but it hasn't really sunk in so just explaining to them how easy it is to go out and just play a game with your friends or to eat an apple instead of going to McDonald's or something it it helps them understand and they can become more fit. Mission Fit Possible is hitting a home run when it comes to promoting health and wellness and people are noticing. Here's a picture of Mission Fit Possible leaders being recognized by Mayor Nelda Martinez at City Hall. And here they are accepting a community-wide Healthcare Heroes Award for community outreach. The group was even invited to present at the Canadian Obesity Summit. Um, we researched the correlation between obesity and the risk of gallstones in children. And um, we found that there was a correlation, and so we wrote a research paper about it. And presented it in Vancouver, Canada to hundreds of physicians from all over the world, the only student group invited to present. Club sponsor, Coach Scott Hawks, admits the students never cease to amaze. We have some very outgoing, motivated uh, students that are, that are, you know, that are educated and active. When you see what these students are doing, um, you really give a lot of, uh, you know, it puts a big, you know, swells my heart up a little bit swelling hearts while also getting them pumping, promoting healthy habits that will affect generations to come. Keeping our students and staff fit is important, but keeping our facilities fit is important too. Thanks to the over $300 million investment that you made in new school construction, renovation, and technology in the bond elections of 2008 and 2010, the learning environment in our schools is more engaging than ever for our growing student population. That's right, I said growing population, because after many years of enrollment decline, CCISD began a trend of enrollment growth a few years ago that continues today and will continue in the next several years. Growth thanks to new industry in our area, growth due to innovative programs, and growth directly attributable to your district's dropout recovery efforts. 
We had another very successful Operation Keys walk this year. Keys stands for Keep Every Youth in School. That's coordinated by our Office of High School Completion at Coles High School. This year, 291 volunteers made 377 home visits, resulting in 238 students who were out of school coming back to school. That is great. Cumulatively, in the six years that we've had Operation Keys as our big event in September, we've brought back 1,344 students. And thanks to volunteers like you, we've, uh, we have uh, decreased our annual dropout rate by over 50%. That's also a story to be proud of. <laughs> thanks to that growth, our newest high school, listen to this name, Veterans Memorial High School <laughs> will open at Leipzig and Cimarron in 2015 to meet the needs of our expanding South Side. And Dorothy Adkins Middle School will open at the same time at the intersection of Wooldridge and Rod Field where ground was broken just last week. These new campuses join Colda and Garcia Elementary Schools, which are opened and dedicated in the last year, and the three other brand new campuses funded through our Bond 2008 program. Now, have you heard about the new Harold T. Branch Academy for Career and Technical Education? How, heard about it? Who's heard about it? Well, if you went outside, you heard all about it. That's uh, our latest partnership with Del Mar College. Branch is expected to serve up to 400 students annually over the next few years, providing an industry standard education that's focused on local workforce needs. The school opened this past August and is going to be dedicated in less than two weeks. Not only are these new schools being built to accommodate the latest in technology, efficiency, and best practice design, they've been built with an eye toward safety and security. Tragedies such as the terrible school shootings at Sandy Hook and other schools across the country have made us all much more aware of our vulnerabilities. But your Board of Trustees has allocated additional resources this year for physical improvements to our older schools, such as increased fencing and cameras, as well as a new visitor management system that's called Raptor that instantly checks visitors' IDs against a national sex offender database. More police officers have been hired this year to expand our security presence on our elementary campuses and throughout our school communities. But beyond our facility improvements and staff enhancements to school security, there are volunteers who recognize that school safety is everyone's business. Those who not only talk the talk, but walk the walk, and I mean literally. I'm honored now to share the rest of our story about these true father figures who are taking personal responsibility to keep all of our kids safe at school. Hello class. Hello. My name is John. I'm a watchdog. How are you guys doing? Good. Working hard? John Puente is looked up to here at Dawson Elementary School. He gets high fives, smiles, and lots of attention. He's just one of the many dads who volunteers for the school's Watchdogs program, a program aimed at increasing the presence of positive male role models on campus while enhancing school security. I'm not everybody's dad, but I'm a big, huge guy. And, you know, I notice when I'm in her class, everybody's happy I'm there. And kids that don't even know me are happy I'm there. DOGS stands for Dads of Great Students. But the students aren't the only ones who are great. These dads are too. They work, they go to school, they lead very busy lives. But they manage to carve out time to come here. And while they are here, everyone feels a bit safer. I'm very excited when he comes. Why? Because he, I feel safer and my friends are really happy. Watchdogs like John walk the halls, scout the perimeter of the school, visit the library, cafeteria, and even hang out during PE. They also motivate and award good behavior. The kids love getting their hands stamped by the watchdogs themselves. 
I'm very happy that other fathers volunteer. That's I'm great. sure every father would be here every day if they could to watch over oh, their children. That's great. Today, there are more than 2,800 watchdogs programs in 46 states, all of them helping to promote fathers and the positive, Hello. secure impact oh, okay. they have on our children. It's a good thing. Um, kids seem to enjoy it, look up to you, uh, want to shake your hand, talk to you. It's like you're a rock star. Rock stars of safety. Just know you're not alone. Focusing on academic performance, financial integrity, and state-of-the-art facilities are moving Corpus Christi ISD further down the path toward our vision of being a world-class school district where every student is a learner, every learner is a graduate, and every graduate is a success. But we believe that our daily work is about much more than a standardized test, much more than just a balance sheet much more than just a spick and span school building. Our daily work is about building hearts and minds. And I would want you to know the rest of our story about the efforts great and small that our teachers, administrators, and all of our staff are making to develop our students' hearts through programs like Character First and our GPS mentoring program. Now last year, many of you may have heard a story, uh, about a story involving two students from Miller High School. Tyrell Clay was a senior at Miller last year. He was the football quarterback and an all-around athlete and well-liked student. He made a real statement when he was named Miller High School prom king and surprisingly gave up his crown to a lesser known student named Adam Chadwick. The story was one that as superintendent reminded me why we do what we do here in CCISD. It reminded me that we have students who work very hard to overcome extreme obstacles. And we have students who not only recognize that, but they feel compelled to acknowledge it. We also have loving and committed staff that help unite the two. Now, I'd like to share with you the rest of that story. It's a story of kindness and character involving two boys who lived very different lives. The story was so heartwarming it was featured on CBS News On the Road with Steve Hartman. More popular than free pizza, everyone loves Tyrell. Velocity goes perpendicular. Adam Chadwick, on the other hand, dwells well down the social ladder. Picked on and called names, he's learned to keep to himself two kids with nothing in common until this spring when the student body nominated them both <laughs> for prom king. A nomination that took many by surprise, including Miller High School assistant principal Calistro Banda, who had mentored Adam since his freshman year. And when I found out it was legitimate that the seniors do want him to be on this, um, then we just started thinking about, okay, how is he going to dress? What is he going to wear? How, how is he going to get there? What, what are the plans? That's when AP Banda got the ball rolling. Soon, Miller High School Police Officer Sergeant Billy Flores was in on the action, agreeing to go in halves on a tux for Adam. But before they could even get him fitted, the cheerleading sponsor and the school counselor were setting an appointment with the barber. Adam was open to anything and so uh, he was really excited about it and uh, I met them at Alice former War and I saw his haircut and I was like cool you know this is all right we have before and after pictures everything. From there AP Banda arranged to pick up Adam ahead of time to help him get ready for the big event and then gave him a ride to the prom. What happened next? Well you know it made national news. Tyrell Clay gave his crown over to Adam Chadwick, a selfless act of kindness. But the real story is, this happens every day here at the home of the Battle and Buccaneers. According to Miller Principal Stella Torres, teachers, staff, and students are constantly lending a helping hand. Like if they need a physical to be in athletics or if they need help with a cheer outfit or if they need medical help and, and helping out, 
and not always money, but like I said, maybe rides, maybe a lunch, maybe a, a just someone to talk to. They, they are just so committed to our students in this community that, that makes, makes us proud. In fact, it's that very sense of giving that is so apparent here. Take a look in this student's clothes closet, home to t-shirts, jeans, shoes, much of it donated by teachers themselves. They um, clean out their closets and they bring clothes and, and they bring, you know, great things and they know what to bring for our students. T-shirts that they like and the jeans and tennis shoes and, um, and so for years that closet has really been supported um, by our teachers and our staff here on campus. Support that transcends the traditional learning environment and makes it seem more like home. One of the things I emphasize is that when they come to Miller High School, they're coming to a family environment. Um, we care about these kids as if they're our own, and um, we'll go to bat for them and do whatever we have to. The highly publicized story of two students, one paying homage to another, really started a long time ago. With the influence of a staff of caring, loving, and giving individuals, what other outcome would you expect? I don't, I don't think I could describe the reaction. It still gets me now, yeah. It still gets me now, just, you, you know, everything that went into it was all worth it that one moment. So now you know the rest of our story. Storms never come to stay, shows I bear me, I bear me. I am so proud to be your superintendent. Thank you for being here today and for going forth and sharing the rest of our story with someone else. Thank you very much for all your support.